Hello, it's Roz. Hello. Roz, hi, it's Greg here. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. But, okay, so I'm the Public Rights Way and Country Parks Manager. And so we look after um, various lengths of rights way. I can send you an email with all the data. Um, and this includes the unsurfaced, unclassified road network, which are the, you know, the green dots on the OS maps that most of your group are interested in using generally. Um, we have some byways as well, which the TRF use, um, as well as LARA members use those as well. And because in Devon we've always thought that the, that part of the network is a very important leisure resource for everybody, um, we as a team have taken on the maintenance of that network. From We're part of highways. And so as being part of highways, we look after the lowest category of, of road as well as the network of public rights of way. And because um, in Devon, tourism and access to countryside is one of our big selling points. You know, it's one of our biggest industries, really. Um, we've always had a very good relationship with the TRF through our P3 groups because many of the members are actually on parish councils as well. And... Um, Initially, it was through um, the legal definition, which I think a lot of TRF groups get involved in with our legal side of public rights of way work. And so someone called Brian Sussex in the Devon TRF used to be very active and helpful and put forward claims, you know, through that legal side of things. But um, a growing interest has been in more in the practical side, which has been most helpful. So through our parishes and through local members, and one of the members, your members, is on our local access forum as well. Um, and he's also a parish councillor. Um, so he kind of understands how we operate. So that's been a very useful link. Um, and they uh, get in contact with our wardens who work closely with them to get things cleared and often put down stone and just generally liaise and organise things. So, um, so if we sorry, sorry if we, if we backtrack a, a little bit, so was yeah. this um, kind of commitment to uh, looking after these roads in place when you started your job, or is it something that's developed over time? Um, um, it's developed over time, I suppose. We've always seen them as a useful resource because most rights of way, you know, footpaths and bridleways, go off many of them. So we would have been looking after those sections anyway. Um, but we've got a huge network. Well, Devon's got one of the biggest road networks, I think, apart from Yorkshire or North Yorkshire or somewhere, bigger than Belgium um, for the whole road network. Uh, and much of that, I think it's 500k, is, is approximately is this unsurfaced network. And uh, we're looking at it as one of our key leisure resources, really, because you don't have to... We, we have also a lot of cycle multi-use trails, um, but that's all through negotiation and uh, having to build new, whereas it seems an obvious resource is to look at the existing road network. Um, Do you have um, any data kind of accurate or estimated as to the value, you know, that these tracks and these roads bring to the, uh, the county? I don't think I have particularly for that uh, that layer of a network we can do it for the whole network as you know the total i mean um, it's interesting to kind of um offset you know what you spend on it versus what you believe it brings into yeah. the, to the county yeah. you know um because you guys obviously see it as a as a resource yeah um, um it would be sensible and i'm sure we should be doing it it's uh, we just got a much cruder figure, which is for the whole, um, you know, off-road network, including the footpath. So I'd, we'd have to do a bit of work to break that down. Oh, no, but, but e yeah, e good, even good having idea. that figure is helpful. I mean, um, I don't expect you to know off the top of your head, but maybe if you could. E yeah, email I'll email you that. that. I'll send you follow-up email with data. That would be, be helpful. Great, great. Okay. Um, and so, um, with the particular. Um, uh, story that I kind of first heard about which was the is it Ashwell Bridge Ashwell Lane um yes yes yeah, yeah so you know how did that come about because from what, um, what I can see there was a a lane that was in it had been closed or in danger of being closed and some of the guys actually approached you to try and fix it 
So um, we had a meeting with um, one of my team, who's the asset enforcement officer, and myself met with a group from the Devon TRF, just generally how we could work together and um, build on sort of rather ad hoc work, good work they've been doing with our wardens and how they'd like to um, set up some other projects. And um, so we all thought it was a really good idea. And within about a month, there was one that came forward under the wardens proposed, which was this particular route. Um, and then we set in motion uh, what I think would be quite a good model, which is we we play our role. Um, we have contractor place theirs. Um, uh, we have a, one of our designers kind of looks. This is for more major works rather than yep. just a clearance party. Um, and we look at, we get a cost for how much we would have had to pay to do it and whether we have the money and is it, you know, can we afford it? Um, and then looking at the role of the volunteers. And in the end, I think the article one of your people did showed it came out cheaper if they got involved and they kindly donated their time and some materials and you know a lot of expertise and um so it was it was a really good team effort i think uh, the landowner was one of the landowners was particularly helpful as well um it already it already worked really well so I, you, I, and the weather behaved as well <laughs> <laughs> and um so is the council open? Uh, are there like insurance issues? You know, what, what's, what are the obstacles that you have to overcome to kind of allow this to happen and make it happen? Or is it actually much simpler than people would think? I think it's, we have to be content that the volunteers have a certain level of expertise. And, and the TRF and Devon, I expect, throughout the country are pretty switched on people, aren't they? You're often very... You know, very, some of them are quite big businessmen. Others are very practical people. They they know how to make things happen and and work. So, um, so first, it's a sort of competence of people doing it that they've got insurance, which um, was got uh, by them. That was quite a task, I think, that your group did find out who would cover them from public liability insurance and. Um, that we had arbit funding and um, insurance is a key one, isn't it? We don't usually um, we don't permit anybody using power tools on the on the route on the routes. Um, brush cutters and strimmers are okay as long as they've got their tickets, but we can't um, take on people who would be using chainsaws, for example. So is that something that you would have to provide personnel to do? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. well, we have to make sure people have all the right tickets to do it, and yeah. um, so we have some quite clear guidelines. Um, but insurance for the work they did, as far as public liability, was important for us as well. So. Great, um, and so um, it's it's really encouraging to kind of hear your your kind of attitude towards the green green lanes, green roads as a resource. Uh, are there any um, downsides? Because um, obviously motor vehicles in the countryside can cause conflict. So uh, are there parts yeah. of your job where you have to kind of deal with that? Yeah, so obviously it's usually um, uh, maverick users. So, uh, you know, if, if we do get a complaint, it's usually a, an urban fringe issue. And usually some young person's got, a you know, a, one of those uh, off-road motorbike, what are those, one, two, five, so those low... Yeah, horsepower yeah, yeah. things, and they're zooming around the edge of Dartmoor because they just and they're, and they're going everywhere. They're not just going on, thinking, "Oh, I'll go on an unsurfaced country road." You know, they'll they'll be zooming all over the place. But it gets a bad name, um, and uh, it it isn't the TRF. It's it's somebody misreading their map and taking Granny in their new Range Rover down the wrong route because the sat nav said something you know and getting stuck and that uh, tends to be the problem um do, I think, do you have an approach to dealing with those situations um they, well we we usually tell the complainant that they have to try and find the um, registration number and it's a police matter blah blah, blah. um we uh 
where we get, um, and we haven't had any for a long time, but where we, we get a complaint from parishes saying, oh, hundreds of motorbikes or whatever were using this route, we, if it becomes serious enough and enough complaints and people, uh, we tend to put in counters on the route to see if it's a perception or, re- or a reality. And we've discovered it's 99% of the time a perception. So it might have been a trail riders group or a motor like a motor um, four-wheel drive type group have gone through one Sunday in every three months or something, but it's the perception that it's going to happen again. Um, sometimes we get people who say, oh, I met um, lots of these motorbikes coming up when I was walking down this route. And so I think it's a, a surprise for some people that some of these unsurfaced roads routes can be used in this fashion. And they're checking why were they there, and then we explain there's a, you know, its, it's status is such that they can use it, and we do a bit of, they tend to clear it and make it available for everybody. Um, what we do ask is that um, the that there's some reasonable sort of voluntary restraint in very bad weather, and so they're not going to be totally churning or up it up or, and destroying routes for everybody else. And I think the TRF and Devon are very um, considerate about that because they behave in a very reasonable way about it. So. That's great. It's, it's interesting to hear that the perception and reality can be quite different. And it's encouraging as well that you actually put the effort in to go and actually collect data to back one or the other up. So uh, Yes. I mean, uh, if, if we did find something, then we'd go through a, a consultation process Again, it's not often an organised group. You see, it's it's um, just individuals often, or people not belonging to a group who've been out there tearing around, and that's much more difficult to manage. Um, I know Cornwall and other counties have quite good working relationships with the police for that sort of situation, um, whereas with um, an organised group like the TRF, it's a different matter altogether. You know. It's, uh, yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what's next on the the TRF uh, DCC well, agenda? Well, the, <laughs> they've been. Um, we we run a parish path partnership scheme, which is where parish councils and communities look after the network of public rights away and some of these on surface roads as well, because it forms part of the leisure network. And so we invited. Uh, we had we run training and events, and we invited the TRF to. I think it was six workshops we've been holding throughout the county. It was sort of drop-in sessions. And uh, they kept, they turned up, and this is sort of meet and greet and have a cup of coffee and talk about things. And um, they're almost was sort of developing a relationship with between them and parish council. So they have this sort of active, um, I don't know if flying squad's the right word, sort of they can shoot, come in and do some help parish councils do work on the network especially of the higher category routes um, whereas uh, so I think that's working really well um, I know in Sidman Parish a TRF member is out there working with the parish clearing all sorts of routes from footpaths upwards and it's a really really positive relationship I think so it's working really well so we're really pleased actually so yeah. so we're going to be developing programs both with parish councils and hoping parishes will go direct to the TRF um, and our wardens are working with the uh, them as well as far as a sort of program so we can get some sort of program going. Um, some of it won't need our engineering team support because it might be just helping clear a route that's become overgrown through to you know, it's something that we did, which was uh, the building of that bridge on the route in, um, um, I can't remember the name of the parish now, Ugbra Parish, I think it was, wasn't it? Well, th- that's fantastic. Um, I guess just to finish up with, um, a couple of points or questions, really. Um, mm. What What do you think are the kind of key ingredients to this kind of successful relationship? And then also... Um, what's the value of investing time to make it happen? So th- that question, particularly for other people in your position in different councils, whose job it is to you know, manage the network, um, I can tell you now not everyone has as, as, as um, 
a, a forward thinking approach as yourself and your team so you know what's the value to do it doing what you do for the network in other parts of the country um well firstly as as part of main highways uh, we have a engaging community strand um, as part of the strategy of the whole of the highway teams so there's a lot about people filling in potholes and you know so it's part of our um approach generally um it's also with reducing budgets we're having to look at different ways of working and as a team we're taking on not only these routes but other roads which will become our lowest category of road as well um so it's called we have a strategy called changing lanes which is is embedded within our directorate so it's about should of the metal routes become uh, what we call category 12 but the lowest level these unsurfaced roads and we're working with parish councils for them to identify those routes um which actually is going to create more work we hope with the TRF because they're going to need you know more looking after in a different way rather than just getting in you know a, a man with our teams of highway contractors we're going to need people much more used to working out sort of strange dra- drainage things and um so so uh, push come to shove it's a change in culture really that we're having to do um plus the fact that Devon has always been very much um wanting to work with communities and parish councils. That's great. And and what, what do you think are the key ingredients to success? You know, it's to me it sounds like it's people, but you know, what can yeah, you elaborate it's communi- on? That? Communication and people and willingness and practicalities and um perhaps not getting polarized in views, you know that being pragmatic I suppose. So um TRF pick pick people to pick their battles, do you see what I mean? Rather than um we we don't tend to have big huge arguments um with the TRF at all because they're helping us and equally they realise we're stretched and we can't do everything but when we can we'll work together, I suppose. That's fantastic. Does that make sense? Yeah, that yeah. Make sense? Yeah, thank you. I mean you obviously much. there's the odds um, glitch where um, we part of our organisation stopped tried stopped up one of the routes that your organisation was very keen on, and you know it's not all rosy, um, but I think from the practical maintenance side, I think it's a very um, good way of working.